Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today brought the release of the White House's budget request for the coming year. And because this is a politically charged document, I'm going to avoid talking about anything except NASA. And most importantly, how this really spells big trouble for SLS. Now, I should probably start out by explaining for those of you that don't understand how the US government works, this is merely a request from the White House, from the President, from the Vice President, as to the money they would like to see spent in the budget. The actual budget has to come from Congress and Senate agreeing on a final bill. And the SLS program is actually a perfect example of this in action. When Obama came into office, he set up the Review of the United States Human Spaceflight Plans Committee, better known as the Augustine Commission, which was tasked with a review of the US's human spaceflight plans. And one of their conclusions was that the nine-year-old Constellation program was so far behind schedule, so underfunded and over budget, that it would never meet any of its goals. So in 2010, Obama pushed ahead with the commercial crew program and didn't include any request for funding for the Constellation program, essentially cancelling it. But these suppliers and contractors who had been developing Constellation had political influence, and it wouldn't be long until the Ares rocket from Constellation became the SLS. Both the Ares and the SLS were shuttle-derived vehicles. They used many of the pieces of hardware from shuttle launchers. The SLS in particular uses four RS-25 engines, which have been evolved from the design used on the space shuttle, and they have a pair of solid rocket boosters borrowed pretty much straight from a shuttle. So while the White House might request one thing, the Congress and Senate might deliver something else. And you know, this has actually worked pretty well for NASA in the last year, where they got something like 700 to $800 million more than what the White House requested. But that also means that the White House's request as written represents a $500 million cut in NASA's funding. But the changes that are likely to affect the SLS aren't represented as simple budget cuts they are presented as reforms to the program. So the budget is going to defer funding of upgrades to the SLS and instead focus on getting the current version launched. The current baseline version of the SLS is supposed to be able to launch the Orion capsule into lunar orbit. And for an upper stage, it uses a Delta IV upper stage, which has been rebranded as the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage. As the name suggests, this was only supposed to be an interim design until they developed the exploration upper stage. This is supposed to use four RL-10 engines and would be about five times heavier than the ICPS, and they would be able to launch large payloads into orbit of the moon. However, development on this was suspended last year, and that notably leaves the SLS without a way to launch large payloads into the orbit of the moon, such as the Lunar Orbiting Platform Gateway thing. The original LOP-G plans had an Orion capsule and then a component for this space station being launched on a single launch vehicle, but now they want to move those uh, payloads, these uh, large modules, and have them launched on commercial launch vehicles. Now, that is going to be a stretch. I think it's going to limit them to very heavy launch vehicles. We're not sure how this is going to play out just yet, but it is a big loss for SLS. It is only going to be launching Orion capsules with crew on them and nothing else. But wait, I hear you ask, what about that Europa Clipper mission, which uh, the scientists and politicians assured us could only possibly be launched on SLS? Well, at the end of last year, there was some concern over the fate of the Europa Clipper mission. After all, its biggest proponent in Congress, John Culberson, was voted out. Well, this budget lets the mission stay alive, but it moves it to a commercial launch vehicle, which they claim would save over $700 million. And to be clear, NASA had indicated in previous years that it would prefer to launch this on a commercial rocket, but of course, Congress kept directing them to focus this on the SLS instead. At this point, NASA hasn't made it clear which commercial launch vehicle could do this, but looking at NASA's launch vehicle performance website, the only thing that gets even close to be able to launching a six-ton spacecraft towards Jupiter is the Falcon Heavy in full expendable mode. And even then, it will probably need a kick stage, probably a Star 48 solid rocket motor. And even then... 
it'll probably need at least one gravity assist, meaning that it would take longer to get to Jupiter than it would if it was on an SLS rocket. On the other hand, spending a few extra years getting to Jupiter is probably still a lot faster than waiting for SLS to get its act together. I can remember back to the start of the decade when they were seriously talking about the SLS launching people around the moon in 2017, and, uh, you know, perhaps SpaceX launching one of their cargo spacecraft to the space station in 2017. Obviously, both of those plans have suffered delays, but to be fair to SpaceX and Boeing, the commercial crew program was consistently underfunded for the first five years or so, and some of that money actually ended up going to help SLS, thanks to its allies in the Congress and Senate. And that's why, despite these proposals marking perhaps the beginning of the end of the SLS program, I wouldn't count it out right away because it has many, many allies in many, many states. Similarly, like previous years, this has tried to defund the Wide Field Infrared Survey Telescope, a whole bunch of climate observation spacecraft, and zeroed out funding for NASA's Office of Education, which is now known as the Office of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics Engagement. And none of this has happened the last three times it's been proposed, so it's probably not going to happen this time around. So we're not expected to see the final results of this until much, much later in the year, and indeed, possibly next year. And by then, for all we know, new space hardware could in fact be flying that might change all these plans. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>